Right, we are taking off soon. We're pretty much almost all ready. We're gonna get the dog's boots and jackets on and then we're going to head out to the cabin. I was like, I'd rather be at home sleeping. Okay. Gearing the dogs up. We're gonna put the boots on them to start with and we'll see how they do. Hopefully they keep their feet a little bit warmer. Nice little shoes, huh? Like little Nikes. <laughs> there you go, pup. See what happens. Okay guys, Bo gets his brand new boots today. He's not very excited. Bo, come here. You gonna be all right, dude? Come here, Bo. Sometimes Bo has a hard time figuring life out, but we're gonna get his boots on him, get his jacket on him. It's actually, it's pretty nice for all of us. It's 10 degrees today. Um, and that's warm for right now. A few days ago, maybe four or five days ago, it was negative 28 degrees down here. So it's warmed up quite a bit. I'm gonna get the boots on Bo, get his jacket on, and we're just about ready to take off. Oh my gosh. Bo, see, he doesn't have as big of paws as Bandit though, you know what I mean? Bo, He's you're looking good. Much. You are looking good, dude. Look at that. Come on, Bo. Check those boots out, dude. How are they feeling? Good job, Bo. Good job. <laughs> Get in there, babe. Get in. Now. Oh, good job, boys.
All right, we are at the halfway mark. So I think we've been like 27, 27 miles. Dogs are doing really good. Bandit's doing great. Bo has a little bit harder of a time, but, but he's doing well too. He didn't want to come out for a potty break. I broke open some hand warmers. Feels like it's gotten a little bit colder out here. I think as we head out this direction, it's, it's chillier. You can tell the sun has not come up, I don't think, but there's a little bit of a light in the horizon. So far, the only thing that has went unplanned was I had a little bit of itchiness going on at the beginning of our trip. Either my mask or the goggles I was wearing was causing me some severe itching, which wasn't well. But um, now that we've got that taken care of, I've switched gear, we're good to go. The whole trip is pretty much on water or frozen water. So we're on a river and it's a marked groomed trail. It is pretty easy to see where you're going. And being that we've done it a few times, we do feel pretty comfortable doing it. It's 10 o'clock and we've been traveling for two hours. This is pretty good. I feel like we, we are, we've timed this right. I think we thought it would take us four to five hours and that's including some stops. I'm thinking it's gonna take us about four hours if we don't stop too much more. That's going about 15 miles an hour averaging. We have to go 10 on slower spots. In some spots we can go 20. When Eric and I came out here by ourselves without towing or the dogs, we were averaging closer to 30. So we got to the cabin in like two and a half hours. We're gonna keep on going down the trail so we can get there with some light to check things out and do some work. Come here, come here. Sweet old man. Brother Bo. Come on, I know you gotta get in. In, 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 in. I know there's no room. Turbo. <laughs> Almost there, dude. Come on. Put him in, man. Well, guys, four hours later and 60 miles, we have arrived. The snow's deep, the dogs are exhausted. First thing we need to do is we need to get up to the cabin. We've got to use our snowshoes. It's not really a path up there. We're going to see if we can get that place warmed up. Two mine counting to make sure we have all of them. I see, I see one, two in here. Those are bows. Was Bandit missing any? Yeah, one. He's missing one? I got one in my pocket. Okay, that's perfect. Bo, come here. Bo, come here, baby. Bo, come on. Come on. We're going to hike up there. I'm going to bring the propane tank and the, the propane heater. And then we're gonna see if we can work on that wood stove. I've never been hungrier in my life. This is super slippery FYI this time around. Just be careful. Do you, do you want me to grab anything that you got? Okay. There you go, you got it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is cool. That got slippery. Nothing like lugging a 20 pound propane tank up a hill in the snow. Does that post need to be replaced? Probably all so. of them, huh? Pressure shooting. Oh, it is. Look at this.
Okay guys, welcome to our new cabin. Before we give you the tour, we're gonna get inside, see if we can get the wood stove or the propane heater going. Cause it is cold outside, so it's cold inside. Bandit, you wanna go in? It smells stagnant. Maybe I can use that brown blanket for him right there. Yeah, no, that's a that's a wool one. Use like one of those. Like that fleece one? Yeah. I would put it kind of where Bo is. Man. <laughs> no pieces. Boys. the wrong way. Do you want me to hand you anything? Uh, just, Do you need to move the ladder over? Yeah, I gotta move the ladder over a little. Move it over here to the right, right? Yeah. It looks like just maybe this part down here needs to be pushed back in the wood stove, but that looks pretty good. That didn't take you long. How's the thing outside? Oh, Won't that go out? Bo, get up here, babe. Bo, come on, babe. Bo, get up. Bo, get up. Up. Well, as you can tell, the dogs are exhausted, and by my breath, it's still cold in here. Try to get the wood stove going, and it's just, right now, it's just a little too old, and I'm not really comfortable starting that because I don't want to burn the place down. So we got the propane heater going for now. I'm probably going to work on the wood stove a little bit later. Um, got the dogs covered with their blankets. We're going to head back down the hill to our snow machines. Um, it's not that far, maybe like not even 100 yards, and we're going to grab a bunch of more stuff, start bringing things up here. We're starving. We're going to eat lunch on the way here. We decided to wait until we got here, so probably gonna eat some lunch when we get back up here. So we finally made it back up the hill. We got our food. We're starving. We're gonna have uh, some smoked salmon salad we made, and then we bought some triscuits to go with it. I'm really hungry. I'm really not cold, but I imagine when we're sleeping. Yeah. I I don't see why we couldn't just take that thing off and rip the insulation out. What? Well, um, right. real. I'm feeling much better now that we have started to eat. We have to run down and grab some more stuff. We'll show you guys what it looks like down there in the trail. It's pretty slippery getting up. Show you a little look around the property. And something big on my list was snow removal. I actually want to get all the snow off the deck, yep. potentially even snow off the roof because there's just a lot of snow out here and no one's been removing it for the last like over a decade. So we want to get, <laughs> we want to get some of it off this time around. Mm -hmm. After that, we're gonna head back inside, see what we can do with the wood stove, and give you a tour around, as well as us too, looking around everything that's in here. Yep.
So this place has a pretty awesome view, and it's actually right on a lake, which is right there. It's frozen right now. That's where the snow machines are parked. I think it's probably maybe 100 yards to the cabin. It's really tucked up and hidden in there, which is really cool. There's really awesome trees out here. There's cottonwood. There's birch. There is spruce. We also have beetle kill spruce, so we'll have some wood we can use. Uh, I think we just got to grab a couple more things, and then we're going to head up to the cabin. It's a beautiful birch tree right here. It's got some chunks of chaga on it too, a couple of them. There's some really big trees here. So I don't know if you can see that tree right there, that birch, I think that's the thickest birch tree I've ever seen. The thing is massive. So a little bit about the cabin. Uh, the cabin itself is a 16 by 16 with a small loft and it is on a little over four acres. And if you see right here, these are claw marks from a bear trying to get inside this thing. I think the cabin was built in 1986. It's older, but it's, uh, it's extremely sturdy. And it's actually surprising how good a condition this thing is actually in for being that old and just being a cabin that you know people didn't actually live at. There's no other outbuildings. There's just the cabin. There is an outhouse, but uh, it's pretty much not salvageable. Let's go check it out. So it looks like the bear was over here trying to get inside. <laughs> People who got the cabin from, they pretty much just left it how it was. So there was food and stuff inside there. So I'm guessing that's why it was probably trying to get in. So it's a really cool property. Um, first time we came and looked at it, we weren't expecting it to be kind of up on this hill that it's on. The lake, like I said, it's about 100 yards away, maybe that, maybe 80 yards, but the house is like 50 feet up on this hill. We have a lot, just all solid ground out here, not compared to our, our house or our other cabin where we live. That has a lot of like bog and not buildable land. This land out here, this is nice land, loving it. in there like I said outhouse pretty much a total loss snow collapsed it that tree fell on it it's sunk in the ground that's okay we don't want an old outhouse we'll have to build a new one out here so we're gonna take a little walk around and um, kind of just explore this place a little first time we came out here it was just Ariel and I and we didn't have that much time to spin out here so we didn't get a chance to really explore the property so we're gonna walk around a little more Another big tree. We got like some crazy big trees out here. It's really cool. It's a cottonwood. So we haven't quite figured out the property boundaries and I don't think we're gonna figure them out today. I think the land was surveyed a long, long time ago and it's kind of like a big rectangle and it goes out to the lake shore and there's this really awesome ridge. The property's south facing, we really like that. So you get that sunshine when there is not that much sun. So in the winter, we have just a few hours of sun. It's beautiful. There's some land out here too that is owned by people as well, but there's also a lot of state land, including the land that's out that way behind our property, which is awesome. This is a really cool, cool little place here. Um, I think we already said it, but there's no utilities out here because we're, we're so far out. You know, some people, you can, if you wanna put, put in the money and the time, you could probably have a little shallow well or well drilled and some people would have solar out here. But I think Eric and I kind of plan to keep it just totally the way it is, just rustic, no utilities. And another reason we already mentioned that we really love it is because of the access. So it's just completely, separated from the roads so you just physically can't get here not only just not by road but by atv or any sort of means like that you really have to take helicopter plane boat in the summer months or snow machines in the winter months last time we were here i started shoveling the deck but i've got to finish it I think 
we're also going to try to work on the roof since I think there's about three feet of snow out here. Are you laughing? It's a lot of snow. The deck's still surprisingly really strangely strong for being. Again. I mean, I just don't get it. No one's been out here for a long, long time and taking care of this place. Yeah. But the stairs did fall apart. So we built up air to put up some snow. Had to make a little slope. Our winter stairs. Well, pretty cold outside. What do you think it is? Close to, maybe five degrees? Yeah, single digits. Yeah, zero to 10 degrees, I'd say. <laughs> With that little propane heater inside. There's definitely some drafts in this cabin, but we've got it to heat up to 29 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're almost above freezing. I don't know. It's been a long time since someone in the winter has had this little cabin above freezing. I still want to get in there and see if we can get that wood soap to work because it's going to be a cold night. We can't get it to go. Beautiful. This is a beautiful place. I wish we could stay longer. Man. Got a lot of snow on the roof. The deck's looking good, but we're gonna see if we can get some of that off. Metal roof on this cabin, so hopefully it slides pretty good. We're gonna do the old rope and uh, water bottle trick, I guess. <laughs> Got some paracord. We're gonna just throw it over the roof, little sections, and you just kind of cut through the snow, and it usually works pretty good. It works on our cabin back home, so we'll see what happens. Okay, ready? Don't stay that way that. See? That is some major snow. Keep walking. Can you switch with me? Go right the base layer. Yeah, it was a great one. That's why you don't want to be near it, huh? Heck no. Look, this is such a good resting spot. You don't even need a jacuzzi. Well, that worked pretty decent. Got a lot of the weight off the roof. Probably going to get a little more on the front. But on the other side of the cabin, there's also a dead tree that's leaning against the cabin. I'm going to take the axe over there, see if we can get rid of it. Since we haven't got the wood stuff going inside, we got some old scrap wood here. Looks like this might have been from the outhouse or something. We got some firewood inside. We're gonna have a campfire outside. Bandit, what do you want it for? So we're looking through some of the old stuff it was in the cabin. It's a bow hunting book or magazine, and it's from 1992. You wanna save the magazines for now? Yeah. This is August 15th. 97, that's some sort of Alaska paper. Alaska newspaper. Yeah. This is just for kids. Oh, cool. This is called Fur, Fish, and Game, June 1992. That is a total Alaskan magazine right there. So it looks like we got some reading material for tonight. This one looks really cool. Might seem kind of weird that we just bought this cabin and there's like a bunch of stuff that belonged to the old person here, but. Here in Alaska, it's actually pretty common, these remote cabins, it's really hard to get things out here. You know, whether you're building something, whether you have equipment out here, chainsaws, ATVs, whatever you have. It's hard to get it out here in the first place, but it's really hard when you're selling the place to like take it with you. So a lot of these cabins are just sold as is, including this one. A little backstory on the cabin, the gentleman we purchased it from, the story we know is he came out here 13 years ago. Uh, the day he purchased it, he didn't build the cabin, it was already here, but he came out here 13 years ago and that was his only time out here. So he came here 13 years ago, he left, and we're the next people out here. So that's why it kind of looks strange on the inside. Not strange, but there's old food and just weird things. We'll show you a little more when we go inside. Okay, we've got the fire going. Let's go see if we can take care of that tree that's leaning over on the cabin over there. Oh, right on 
a nice deck. <laughs> I was just trying to not hit the window. It may seem like we're trying to burn a lot, but we just honestly, a lot of this is not extremely useful to us. It looks like a mouse had its way with all this old newspaper and we just want to be practical and try and get a lot done in this little time we have out here. Yeah, and we're gonna end up bringing some trash bags of other stuff home that we're not gonna use out here. Like I said earlier, it's hard to bring stuff here and to bring stuff back. So we're just burning some of this stuff that we don't need. And I think a lot of this was kind of set aside to burn uh, mm -hmm. to start a fire, but since the wood stove's not working, it's kind of just in the way. So we're getting rid of it. It's old and it's gotta go. Anything else good in there? Oh, you got a receipt? You got a receipt there? From where? I don't know. Okay, I got a receipt. Let's see who was here and who bought something. It is from International Aviation Services. It's a plane? Uh, someone it's a plane. bought aviation fuel. It was $247 a gallon. And they bought 25 gallons. And this was in May of 2000. He paid 62 bucks. Uh, this cabin is airplane accessible either with a bush plane with skis on it in the winter or a float plane that can land on the lake so someone had a plane though owned a plane most likely yeah okay yeah. on the plane cool. so I, have, I can I can recognize the name on here and this was the not the guy we got it from but the guy who he got it from so it's really cool Ariel's keeping the fire going some of these trees you see behind me are dead that the beetle kill so I'm just imagining the view once we get some of those trees down Nice view of the lake down there. This place is gonna be really cool. So there's a couple shovels out here. Nice hammer. The saw is there was talking about. We got this really nice X. It says Plum 35. Pretty sweet X. Oh, I need to, that's getting a little too heavy. That's, that's too much. Yep. That's actually going out into the woods. That's it, we are out of sunlight. We're gonna head inside and take a look around in there and get some things cleaned up. made it inside the cabin, sitting in front of the little propane heater here, and we officially got the cabin above freezing. It's 33 degrees in here. The boys are totally just like kicked back, relaxing. This is like one of the beds that's in here. There's this one and there's a bunk right there, and then there's a, another sleeping area up in the loft. That's probably where we're gonna try to sleep tonight. But the boys are doing good. They're just extremely tired. 60 miles in the back of a sled behind a snow machine when it's like zero degrees. It's pretty rough. These dogs are, they're getting old. They're doing good, sleeping. Um, I'm gonna kind of take you over to the little kitchen area, <laughs> kind of start going through some stuff, see what we got. So this cabin came with a nice little propane lantern. It's a Coleman. It's a really old style one too, but this thing's like perfect condition. Doesn't even have any broken glass or anything. So I got this little thing lit up. This is the kitchen area, and it's basically just like really old food. I mean, a lot of like noodles and stuff, like top ramen. This is you can just tell how old this package is. I don't know if it says it when it expires, but pretty much all this stuff is no good. I mean, there's weird things. There's like a hundred packets of hot chocolate, a bunch of noodles, crystal light iced tea, really old like popcorn, salt, pepper, tons of pepper. They have like package upon package of black pepper. Do you know why? No. Fish. Oh, maybe all the fish they were catching out here. Uh, there's a bunch of D batteries, but I don't know if these are good anymore. We'll have to test those out. It says 2008 on them. Let's see if those are any good. Weird things. Soy sauce, olive oil, sugar, tea, coffee. <laughs> we got nuts, pancake mix, more hot chocolate. These people like their hot chocolate. And then we got like utensils. You know, there's some, there's some good things in here we can use. Really nice plates, bowls, a couple of wine glasses if the mood strikes. Ariel tried the gummies that are almost 30 years old. She said they're not good anymore, so we're gonna we're gonna toss these. Like I, I mean, a lot of the food is gonna be garbage. It's just so old. And can we try the hot chocolate? Yeah, we'll try the hot chocolate. Hopefully, it's not white from being so old. I don't know. It's probably still good. We'll have some later. But chicken bouillon, um, chicken herbs, noodles and sauce. Butter, 
There's no expiration dates on that kind of stuff, Bob. Oh, I guess not. We got Kool-Aid. Oh, that's like solid though. So that's that's not good. A lot of crystal light. Oh, this is cool. Look at this old cup. Oh, that's not a cup. What is that? It's like, like a, a sifter. sifter. Oh my gosh. For all of your French desserts. These they made good pancakes out here. I bet you they sift oh, well, how old is this thing? Well that that's is just so what like, cool. the sifters look like. I've never seen a sifter that's in a cup like that. What do you mean? I've seen that's what sifters look like. This old though? That's old. Okay. Pancake mix. These boxes are just so old, you know? Just looking at them. Let's see. I don't see an expiration date on it though. So unfortunately the pancake mix is from 1995. So we're probably not going to eat that. We've got just food. Old food. Bars. A big thing of rice. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. Um, everyone's kind of heard of Mountain House meals. They're like the you know, freeze dried food that you just add water, water to and it's on like Walmart or everywhere. This is a very old mountain house. So I'm guessing these are actually probably still good. They're still sealed, made in Oregon. We got freeze dried rice and chicken. And we got a uh, turkey tetrazzini. Never heard of that. I'm actually gonna keep these. This is really cool, man. I can't find a date on these, but man, these are old, old. These are really cool. We got some tea. Um, you have coffee! Yeah, I know there's coffee over there. Let's see, let's see if it's any good. We got coffee, people. Unopened. Hills. And Folgers. Eh. Oh no, it's kind of old. What other kind of stuff you got? Uh, I've got a can of tuna. I guarantee that's not good anymore. Hey. Oh! Huh. Yeah, it's frozen. What's on the bottom? It's just oh. moisture. This expired in 2004. This is more the Bisquick, so. No good. We got sh there's some sugar in here. We've got uh, we got some nuts, whole cashews. Sell by uh, 1990. So cashews. Those are old. Let's pop them open. Man, old stuff. Errol and I are pretty sure that we're the fourth owners of this cabin, uh, from when the guy originally built it. And I think all this stuff in here, food and stuff, is just stuff that's been brought out here and kind of passed on to the next owner. But it is not good to have stuff like this in a cabin, especially when you're not there. Um, yeah, animals coming in here, mice, bears, whatever. So we're gonna start throwing a bunch of this stuff away. We got a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of actually big black trash bags here. So I'm sure we're gonna fill a couple of those up and have to bring them back and take them to the dumps, unfortunately, but we gotta get this place cleaned up. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Would that's you say that's extra fermented? Extra fermented. Solid. That salt is solid right there. Yeah, moisture. Moisture, yeah. No bueno. 36? Oh, it's heating up in here. April 29th of 1993. Ooh, Ooh, old place. Old place right here. <laughs> soap? Yeah, like hand soap. That's awesome. That's awesome. Toothpaste. I don't really want to use someone else's toothpaste. This is 21 year old hot chocolate. Yep. No, this is 20 year old hot chocolate. Okay. Yeah, it's probably not good, honestly. No. So, this place has a bunch of big black trash bags, which is awesome, so I can throw the garbage in here. And when we got here, um, not this time, but the trip before, uh, like a bottle of syrup got knocked over and some mice chewed it. So, there's a couple dead mice right here we got to clean up, a little syrup on the ground. And then down here, it's mostly just like um, pots and pans, some empty water jugs. Nothing too bad down here. Doing dishes maybe, that kind of stuff? Yeah, tubs for doing dishes. Sponges. This is a old water container that something chewed up. Maybe a dog or something. Frozen solid Windex. <laughs> oh, there's some good stuff in here. I see a roll of duct tape. I see some rags. I'll have to pull that box out and see what we got. Anyways, we opened up a new trash bag. Uh, we're gonna bring this one outside. Open up a new one. Got a lot more trash. Hopefully we can fit it all. Sardines. And olive oil. Oh, that actually sounds delicious. What? I never that sounds... I never probably because they don't do that anymore. Lightly smoked. I never had a uh, sardine, actually. Too bad it's 30 years old. Norway! Those six, I think. No, that's fish. You don't need that. It's old. Full roll of duct tape. We got some twine. What else is in here? Insect repellent. I have a feeling that in the summertime, Mosquitoes and bugs are going to be crazy out here, so we're going to need something. Is this uh, dish towels? Yeah. This is called Leak Ender. It's a miracle sealer as seen on TV. 
That's gotta be old. New dish towels. Yes. Do you oh, want nice. Those for our place? Just leave them out here, you think? Probably just leave them out here, we think. Ah, uh, I love them. Or dish you can take them, whatever. It's up to no, you. No, no, no. We'll probably use them out here. Oh, some wow. good stuff. Ziploc bags. We can use those out here. Oh, you want to fold all the towels there. Oh, remember the other day you were looking for some scotch tape? Got tape. Cards. Man, this is the jackpot drawer. Lots of silverware, more matches. Do you want to take everything out and organize it? Sure. Oh my gosh, is that what I think it is? No freaking way! So we just found a really cool map of, of this whole, place. Of this place, the, the tracks Survey. and the lot, the yeah. surveyor's lot, and then a kind of a map of the area. That's pretty cool. Oh, cool. We got some uh, 22 long rifle mini mag. Let's see. CCI. I'd shoot those. Those are in good condition. A little bit of ammo. This is like super fun doing this. Might just seem like I'm going through garbage, but I feel like I'm on that show, um, like American Pickers, or the show where they buy storage units and they don't know what's in them. A ball? Except for your burning one. Yeah. Little, I don't know what these are called, but they're for the lanterns. Bunch of extras, those are awesome to have. Dang, this is great. Stainless steel? You're scaring me. Japan? Oh my gosh, it's sharp too. Yeah, those are nice. These are Japan. I don't know what kind they are, but... That's a nice knife right there. National cutlery. Oh, national cutlery. Japan. Japan. They like, they like never use this. No, they're nice. For fish. That is razor sharp. That is awesome. Cool, we got some good, good knives out here, right? Is this? All right, we, we made it to almost 40 degrees Fahrenheit inside the cabin down here at the table, and the windows are actually starting to thaw out. There was like ice on them when we moved here. This place has a ton of chairs. Man, there's like eight folding chairs. There's a, a screen door that fits on the door. For the summertime that'll be awesome there's a couple stools i'm just kind of cleaning up over here there's two huge propane tanks uh those look like i don't know about 40 pounders or 50 pounders i don't know what they are one of them has some in it one of them's empty those are super old though so we're probably going to haul those out of here at some point it does have a pretty cool table it's big it's like a five by five uh all of our stuff's on it right now it has these two really cool little chairs we'll definitely use those it's got a nice ice chest and i looked inside and they actually cleaned it out so that's nice so there's a little propane barbecue in here. I'm guessing that works. And another really nice seat. And just a lot of wood, a lot of wood and like sticks, a ancient life vest. <laughs> um, really cool saws. So those are gonna be useful for us. It looks like the owners before us and the owners before that intended to spend a lot of time here, but just not, unfortunately. They let life get the best of them, so that's why we're out here now. Underneath it. 40 degrees. Man. Can you so look at what you can get done. We should that's probably like small, hold that uh, propane thing and see how much is in it. You could turn it off, they're really warm. Like the blankets fans off, like he's what do you think about having that there? We can have like a chair there, a chair there, or? Found this really cool little, looks like a mini canoe that someone whittled. We'll have to test it out this summer, see if she floats. One thing that's nice about Alaska, there's a minimal amount of spiders. And we don't have snakes where we live either. Yeah, there's no spiders on all Yeah, mice, honestly for us, we mice haven't been a problem at all. We used to have a big mice problem in uh, Oregon. But here, it's been awesome. Hey, Eric, this is it for someone who understands what's going on. Here, 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 here. Thank you for the exchange. Yeah. <gasps> oh, I'm sad little I'm going to actually throw them out. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of stuff. It's so funny the abundance of certain things like silverware, brooms, seats. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. The bl the uh bedding stuff. There's a really cool little blanket here. It looks very new or clean. Super thick. We're gonna leave that here. I think we're gonna have to use that tonight. There's another one too somewhere. Okay. Well like I said before we have a half loft up in this place so there's stuff up there too. We're gonna go check out what's up there. The loft is, is very clean. There's a huge like brand new double person sleeping bag, another wool blanket that we'll probably end up using. Random stuff, this looks like it's a mop for a mop. There's like tubes that we can use on the lake. Inner tubes? Yeah, what the heck is in here? Like saw blades, 
for a skill saw. Those are new. A lot of building supplies. Really small nails. A big old bag of nails and some screws. So we're finding some old like hunting regulation books in Alaska from 1985. We've got th four really nice oars for like a boat. A bunch of plastic bags, more stuff we need to burn. Oh my gosh, this is like the tool jackpot right here. Old bottles of... Ammonia. Ammonia? Okay. That's a nice um, top. Caulking. Just tools. Tools and screws and nails and things. Whoa, get rid of that liquid. What is that? Wood thing? You don't need those. Real pine. Pretty much it up here. The loft's actually in pretty good order, nice and clean, and it is a lot warmer up here. I think Aaron and I are definitely going to sleep up here. We'll probably lay this sleeping bag down that came with the cabin, and then we'll take our sleeping bag, our double person, use this kind of like as a mattress. Do you want me to give me the liquid bottles as well? There you guys go! I got a lot of Coffee time. All right, guys, we've got the cabin pretty well cleaned up. Worked on it for a couple hours. The sun is gone. It's actually dark outside now. What is it, 5? 20 right now? Yeah, like five, closer to 530. It seemed to stay up a little bit later here. Yeah. But we're going to kick back and relax for a little while. I'm going to make some coffee. You want coffee or hot chocolate? Both. Okay, we're having Both. coffee and hot chocolate combo, mocha. And we're going to check out some of these cool magazines we found. And then I think we're gonna make some make some dinner later too. Right here. So we've been going in and out and leaving the door open. It's 30 39.7 degrees in here. And that's down the bottom, you know, the bottom level. Definitely a little warmer up in the loft. I'm not even gonna fiddle with the wood stove. Basically what we need to do is we need a new wood stove here. Uh, we're going to keep our eyes out, see if we can find a nice used one, just a small one. And we need, um, yeah, new wood stove piping. It's, yeah, it's just, it's not worth it trying to start that thing and, and burn this place down. Wood stoves, they get hot, so we're going to play it safe today. We're using the propane heater. We're going to use it all night. We just turned it off and checked the propane level, and it seems like, seems like it'll make it through the night. So hopefully it'll be a little warmer in here. So Ariel said she's in the mood for hot chocolate. <laughs> We're gonna try one of these hot chocolate packets. You wanna smell it first? Yeah, let's make sure it's good. Look at it too. It looks good. Oh yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm, that's good. good. So we're gonna do some of, that, some of that. And we'll put the whole thing in there, whatever. And then I got some uh, instant coffee. So you just add this to the water. We're gonna put three of these in here. 100% Kona coffee, freeze-dried instant. That's your thing boiling? Yeah, it's getting hot. A lot of the rentals were in the 600 to 700 range. For like a house? Mm. For like little, uh, con like little apartments. Not a little, you know, not an apartment, but. All right, our mocha is done. Get a nice hot drink in this. Thanks for your work. That's good. Is it pretty hot? It's pretty hot, but it's really good. It's a good hot chocolate. Cheers to the new cabin. Cabin life. I don't think I can drink that yet. Yeah, don't drink that. It's hot. <laughs> We're getting hungry. We're making some dinner. Oh, this water's like frozen. Thank you. Okay. so cold that that meat like started to freeze again. Being in here, you know what I mean? Well, that, I haven't really broke the... What's that temperature gauge say? It's probably dropping again. Sure it's the end. Oh, what is it? It was at 47. <laughs> okay, so it's dropping again. It's dropping. Okay guys, we got dinner cooking. I'm pretty hungry, but it's also getting pretty cold in here. And I found a piece for the wood stove that I was missing, and I got it together. 
and we're gonna start a small fire in there. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna be careful. We got some water and we got a fire extinguisher. So we're just gonna start it up, run it real small, see if we can get this house heated up a little bit. Here's the, here's the flu for it. Oh look at it, you can feel sucking air in. Well, it was outside, everything looks good. The only smoke coming out of this thing is coming out of the top of the chimney, so I think I got it pretty sealed up. Um, I'm just gonna keep that fire small for now, keep an eye on it, but this will be really nice if we can get that going, because I'm pretty sure that that propane is getting low. It's probably a little over half full, but like I said, I think it, it's like six o'clock in the evening right now, so we got a, a long night ahead of us if that thing went out. I think Errol and I would be okay, because um, we got lots of blankets and everything, but I gotta take care of the dogs, so we're gonna try to keep it warm in here. So this is part of the thing I was having an issue with. This is the stovepipe, that top section, and it's like completely just busted. But this is what I first tried to put on, and then I found that piece right there, which is a brand new piece. So I think that's why the stove was taken apart, that we're going to put that in. Man, I can feel... This is nice. I can feel so much heat coming off this thing. This is an old wood stove. Ours at our cabin is an 88, so this one, I, I've never even seen one like this. You load it from the top. It's got a lot of rust. It's rusted through in some spots, so we are gonna have to, unfortunately, replace this thing. That's all right. Hopefully it'll get us through the night. Maybe put the back on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we well, were gonna have these egg noodles with some moose sausage, sun-dried tomatoes, and tomato sauce, but somehow I left the can of tomato sauce sitting on the counter at home. So, we just got noodles and meat with some sun-dried tomatoes. Still looks pretty good. Super big. Yay. That's bigger. Oh, he drank it all? Yeah, he drank it all. 745 and since Eric got that fire going we have a new wind of energy I don't know how but we cleaned this whole place up the maple syrup that had spilt from maybe an earthquake and a whole bunch of little mice had their way with it um, I cleaned that up <laughs> with some hot water and soap it took a while we moved the table over we swept the whole place took out some random things and reorganized it and it's looking really good. It's about, it's close to 60 degrees in here. It's probably hotter upstairs. Eric's boiling water to do dishes. We think we're going to be able to haul out the trash that we collected and I, I don't think I could be happier with what we got accomplished in like 24 hours. I'm not sure how late we're going to stay up because we do kind of want to get up early tomorrow. We want to have breakfast, try to get the last little bit of snow off. I wanted to mention that Eric had a genius idea to bring out a little notebook out here. This is probably not the right kind, but we want to bring a notebook out here and log each trip and basically what, what happened, what we did, what we saw. And um, so we're going to be doing that tonight and writing down all the events that happened. We're going to take it easy for the rest of the night and just see if there's anything else we can tidy up. Man, when I was a kid, I used to make like triple stories. I'd like to see that. I don't know if it'll happen today, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, it used to happen all the time. Now here's my qu real question. Okay. Where do you go from where you're at? I'm very impressed, but where do you go from there? Because I don't see you going up. Keep were, you, were you planning on building a two-story? Yeah. <laughs> you actually know what you're doing. No, they're awesome. all bent. It's, it's not regulation. <laughs> I need a regulation deck. Alright, we're just gonna cheat our way out of here. We're just gonna do a regular A-frame. Call her a cabin. We're gonna play cards, but we don't really know any card games, so... It says it's for four people, but um, we only have two, so... Got a couple dogs. Do the dogs count? Well, we're giving Parcheesi. I think that's how you say it, a try. We've never played it, and it was here. We're gonna see how it goes. I read the instructions. Seems pretty legit. Okay, I rolled a seven, so it's your turn. Well, that's not specific. 
So that's not a die roll of five, it's just one. Yeah. Uh, okay, I get that. I think I just go five. I don't think I get to the six. Oh, so after I enter one, uh -huh. you, any dice that you make, it doesn't have to be fives. You still get to move your things. The fives are just to enter your one. You get to go again? You don't want to steal when you play what's the new game. I save all my wild cards not to be not a very nice person, but it's actually because I don't want to use them. And I, you know, when I use them, when you use them against me. <laughs> okay, so your revenge is how you use them. That makes it okay. Okay, guys, I won the first round of Parcheesi. And as punishment, Ariel is going to eat the extremely old Top Ramen soup. But it's actually not punishment, because I want to eat She just it. wants to eat it, so... We're going to play another round, though. Yeah. So apparently Top Ramen can go bad. The noodles are still good. I think they're in here. But the little seasoning packet, like, turned to... Liquid. They're like liquid. It was, like, moist. So, we got some noodles. We just finished our second game of Parcheesi. We both won one game. Parcheesi! It's getting kind of late. We're getting tired. We're getting delirious. So, I think we're going to call it quits here pretty soon. Oh Look at that little cake. She's a beet part. Log entry number one. Parcheesi tie. Wow, look at that. Is cake good? It's really good. It's like it looks like bread. Fluffy like a croissant. Yeah, it looks like bread. Mmm. Oh, Morning everyone, 7 a.m. out here at the cabin. We got our coffee, we're drinking that. We're about to make some oatmeal. Got some pecans in here, some dried fruit, a little cinnamon. Then I brought out a couple cups of milk for it. Things went pretty good last night. I think our average temperature up in the loft was probably about 75 degrees, which was pretty nice. It was a lot better than being cold. I think I woke up maybe three times, put more wood on the fire. And we're kind of just letting the fire burn out now, and I think it's about 60 degrees downstairs, so it's nice and toasty in the cabin. Well, it is 11 a.m., and we are officially getting out of here. We got more stuff off the roof, kind of cleaned up a little bit more, got all of our stuff packed, and we're ready to go out. I slept pretty well because air had it really hot in here. It got, you know, it felt like in the 80s upstairs. So it was really, really nice. I definitely don't think it would have been as fun of a trip if we could not get the wood stove going. So that's something to think about for the future. It works, but we may most likely going to be upgrading that. The plan is to take it a little bit slower on the way home since the dogs are super exhausted. Ideally, we'd want to come out here for a few days at a time or at least two nights in the future when we're better set up. We should have a fairly simple journey on the way home because it's nice weather. In fact, it's not as sunny as it was yesterday, so it should be a little bit warmer. I think there's snow coming in later this afternoon. Eric and I have found that we actually really like traveling early morning. That way we get to where we need to be and then we have the whole rest of the day. And in fact, with the lights we have and with our goggles, it's super easy to travel you know, during the darkness hours. You wouldn't think that, but it's easier than the middle of the day when there's something called flat light that can happen. And that's where you just can't see anything. So you can't see any shadows and make out anything in the snow. And it all looks just totally white and it makes it extremely difficult for traveling. I'm super glad that we had all the, the trips out here ahead of time. You know, the first time we came out here, we didn't actually make it all the way due to accessibility, but we got out here finally and it was good to kind of like make sure that this was a good place and we weren't gonna arrive with the dogs and not have an actual shelter to stay at. Since this is our second time making it out to the cabin, I feel like it's gonna get a little bit easier. You know, it is a long trip. It's 120 miles 
round trip. Um, I think Errol and I do really well with it. It's not too bad as long as we're kind of feeling up to it. We got a good night's sleep the night before. The dogs have the hardest time. We gotta go a lot slower. It takes about twice as long, but that's okay because you know they want to come out here too. And I'm sure if we ever make it out here in the summer, they're gonna have a really fun time because these dogs just don't do really well in the cold. The reason we kind of bought this cabin is not to live out here at all. It's just to kind of get out and explore Alaska and have a place to stay. I mean, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for us out here. So we're really looking forward to using this place and getting used to it and kind of exploring the land around here. Yep, like Eric said, it's a once in a lifetime thing. So we decided to jump on it. With that being said, we also wanted to thank you guys so much for following our channel and just watching whether you watch all of them or just pop in every once in a while we brought all of the lovely holiday cards that we received from you we really appreciate the emails and notes and all of that and we brought them here so you could experience a part of remote alaska as well as always it means a lot to us that you watch and want to follow our crazy crazy adventures it's 11 o'clock and we gotta get these dogs boots on we gotta get the jackets on we gotta haul the rest of our gear down to the snow machine and we gotta take off because i don't like riding at night We'll see you next time. Bobo! Oh, let me give Vance some water. Come on, babe. He was mad. He doesn't like his boots. He doesn't like his boots at all. Stable. Don't look at the fire. I was going to touch it.